Okay, welcome. What I want to do is show you how to find the remaining zeros if you're already given one zero, and especially if you're given a complex zero. So I'm going to show this two. I'm going to show two different types of problems. I'm going to show it two different ways. The first way I'm going to show it is by using the complex conjugate and also long division. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, when I'm solving, right? We talked about complex numbers. X uh, plus one equals zero, right? You have something like that. So when I want to solve for x, I subtract 1. I get x squared equals negative 1. Square root, square root, x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1. Remember, when we're introducing the square root, we have to, we have to bring in the plus option of a plus or a minus. So therefore, that means your i is always going to be plus or minus. So if I'm talking about zeros, I have to make sure I include the positive and the negative. So therefore, if 3i is a 0, then I can say I have two factors in x plus 3i and x minus 3i. Right? And the way I like to relate it is think of 12. Let's say I have two factors, 12, which would be, let's say, 2 and 3. Those are two factors, right? If I multiply those two factors, I'm going to get 6, which again is another factor of my polynomial. So right now, I'm only dealing with a polynomial to the third degree. I can multiply these and see what I get. Now, I do have a difference of two squares. So I'm going to have x squared minus 9 to i squared is going to be x squared plus 9. So therefore, now what I want to do is I'm going to take those two factors, and I'm going to divide this factor, x squared plus 9, into my polynomial. So I'm going to do that by long division. And you might say, why can't you use synthetic division? Well, the reason why you can't use synthetic division is because remember, when using synthetic division, you have to have a binomial, and it also has to be to the first power. You can't use a quadratic, uh, quadratic type binomial. So you have to make sure it's x to the first power. So I'm going to use long division. So I have x cubed plus x squared plus 9x plus 9. So x squared goes into x cubed x times. x times x squared is x cubed. x times, oh, I got to put a 0. I want to put a 0x in there. x squared plus 0x plus 9. x times 0x is going to give me 0x squared. x times 9 is going to give me a positive 9x. Remember, to subtract the whole side, the whole bottom, x squared minus x squared is 0x squared. x squared minus uh, x squared is just going to give you x squared. 9x minus 9x is just going to give you 0. Bring down the 9. x squared goes into x squared plus 1 times. 1 times x squared is x squared. 1 times 9 is 9. Subtract 0, 0. So therefore, my other 0 is going to be x plus 9. So therefore, my zeros is pretty easy. If I know my 0, 1 is 3i, I know that x1 is 3i, and then x plus 1 equals 0, solve for 1 equals negative 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you find the zeros when given one complex zero. Thanks.